or routines are special types of methods that do not need to finish execution within a single frame. Using a special keyword, they can suspend what they're doing at any point and wait until the next frame or a few seconds in the future to continue executing. Despite these features, coroutines run on the main thread alongside your non-coroutine code, so it's not quite the same thing as multi-threading. In this video, we'll explore some ways to use coroutines in Unity. It's possible to perform tasks over several frames in an update loop without using coroutines by keeping track of progress in an alternative way. For example, we might need to iterate over a list of 100 enemies to check if they're within range of the player, but we might only need to check one enemy each frame. In this contrived hypothetical scenario, you could use an ints to keep track of which player you are on, and a bool to determine whether to process enemies. Then each call to update will do the check on an enemy and increment the counter until it's checked all enemies. The code that initiates the checking process needs to reset the counter and set the bool to true. This is very clunky, as we've added two member variables. What's worse is that all lists we want to process like this will need extra variables to keep track. This is where coroutines step in. Instead of the process we described above, we will write a method with an I enumerator return type. This allows us to call that method as a coroutine. Inside the method, we will write a for loop to iterate over the 100 enemies and perform the check inside the loop. Unlike regular methods, we don't exit coroutines using return. Instead, we use the yield keyword whenever we want to halt execution, and whatever comes after the yield will determine how long the method stops before resuming again. Yield return null will wait until the next frame. Then, to call the coroutine, all mono behaviors have a special method called start coroutine, into which we pass a method call. We have all the parts necessary for the coroutine now, this will do the same thing as the process we outlined before, but we haven't needed to keep track of extra state through the use of additional variables. The start coroutine method returns a coroutine object, so we can save this coroutine into a variable in case we need to completely stop it part with through execution. If we need to stop the coroutine completely, we can pass the coroutine into a stop coroutine call. Or, if we need to halt every coroutine called on this mono behavior, we can call stop all coroutines. Before we continue, I'm going to do the YouTuber thing and say that if you're learning something so far, consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon. It really helps my brain feel good to see numbers go up, and you'd be contributing to that. One common pattern of coroutine usage is to interpolate a value, such as the position of a transform, over several frames. We can pass in the start and end positions, and the duration of the movement, into the coroutine as parameters, then use a for loop containing a call to the lerp method and a yield return null to move the object over several frames. To prevent undershooting, after the loop, we'll set the transform position exactly to the end position that was passed in. Another common usage of coroutines is to introduce a short delay between the method call and an action taking place. Without coroutines, we have access to invoke, which lets us call a method with zero parameters by passing in the method name and a delay in seconds. However, this is inflexible. It only delays the start of the method, and we cannot use this on a method that takes parameters. Instead, we can start a coroutine which uses wait for seconds. The syntax of this is to write yield return new wait for seconds, then pass in the wait time in seconds. There are two things to note. First, wait for seconds is affected by changes to time.timescale, whereas invoke is not. If you want the coroutine to ignore the timescale, you can use wait for seconds real time instead. Secondly, wait for seconds is an object like any other. If you're constantly calling this method, you may want to consider creating a member variable of type wait for seconds to avoid constructing a new one every time this coroutine is called. It's possible to yield on one coroutine from within another. Classes such as wait for seconds inherit from a class called yield instruction, which itself inherits I enumerator the type of all the coroutines we've been writing. That's useful because we can yield on a call to start coroutine. In this code example, we'll also see it's possible to mix and match yield statements. Stepping through this code slowly, when my func1 is called, we'll see this line get output to the console. Then we yield on a start coroutine call for my func2, so execution jumps down here. We passed in a wait time of five seconds, so this coroutine will print this line, then wait 5 seconds, and then print this second line. 
Now that the coroutine has finished, execution returns to myfunc1 where we left it. We'll print this line immediately after myfunc2 printed its final line, then we're calling wait for seconds with a wait time of 3 more seconds. After that, we'll print a final line and myfunc1 will exit. Many of Unity's built in event methods, await, start, update, and so on, have a void return type. However, some of them can become coroutines by using ienumerator as the return type instead. Unity automatically calls these methods as coroutines if we label them as such, which can be useful if we need them to operate over several frames. Any method tied to an update loop won't be able to run as a coroutine, so that includes update, fixed update, late update, and on GUI. Neither can awake, on enable, on destroy, or on disable. However, methods that aren't tied to an object's lifecycle, such as the on collision, on trigger, and on mouse families of methods, can return an I enumerator. To maintain code readability, it's sometimes better to make those methods return void and just call another coroutine via start coroutine from within them anyway, but it's useful to know what Unity would allow us to do. Unity has several update loops. Update and late update are dependent on the frame rate, and fixed update runs just before Unity's internal physics update and tries to run with a fixed interval between calls. With coroutines, we could go further and create our own update loops that run less frequently, say every second. This is helpful because if we have expensive operations that we only need to run periodically, then it doesn't really make sense to run in an update and keep track of when to run those operations. It's also a great demonstration of when we might want to use wait for seconds real time over wait for seconds, because we probably don't want this custom update loop to be influenced by the time.timescale. In this example, we create a coroutine containing a while true loop. It looks scary, but inside the loop, we will yield on a wait for seconds real time object, so it won't immediately crash the game. Then we can start the coroutine within the on enable method and stop it in on disable. So far, we've seen how to use coroutines alongside the yield instructions provided by Unity, and how to yield on other coroutines we've written. Now we'll see how to build our own yield instructions. Unity provides a class called Custom Yield Instruction for this purpose. When we create our own class that inherits some custom yield instruction, we can override a Boolean property named Keep Waiting. Essentially, our custom yield instruction will continue to yield as long as Keep Waiting is true. The value of keep waiting is re-evaluated each frame between update and late update, and we can change how the yield instruction works by implementing our own code in its getter. In this example, we're defining a yield instruction called wait for random chance that waits until we randomly exceed a threshold value between 0 and 1. The constructor sets the threshold value, and the getter returns true when random.value falls underneath or equal to the threshold. When we write a coroutine elsewhere, we can create a new wait for random chance and pass in, say, 0.25. That means that the coroutine has a 25% chance to proceed past this point each frame. We can write whatever instructions we want, but be careful not to make the checks too expensive because it will run every frame. The Unity documentation gives a good example of waiting for a specific mouse button to be pressed down using a custom yield instruction, and we could extend that example further by writing a yield instruction that waits for any button to be pressed down. The keep waiting getter in this example returns false only when get button down returns true for the button we passed in. Unity provides some powerful instructions of its own that inherit from custom yield instruction. Wait for seconds real time is one of them. Wait while and wait until are two more. They accept a boolean delegate and will stop yielding when that boolean becomes false or true respectively. We could rewrite wait for button down using wait until, for instance. This has been a crash course on what you can do with coroutines and what functionality Unity provides for creating your own custom instructions. As with the rest of my tutorials, thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon, you all make these videos possible. If you've been interested in supporting me on Patreon but haven't taken the plunge yet, I'd love to hear in the comments what changes I could make to my output that would make you more likely to join. You can find the link to my page in the description. I'll be back with another Unity Basics video soon. Thanks for watching.